For today's video, I'm going to be letting you in on one of my favourite ways to play the game, and in my opinion, the best way to play the Assault class, Hammer Time. Thunder Hammer is a very powerful, brutal weapon that can clear out hordes of enemies who've won well placed Aftershock. It also has access to deadly light attacks that have a large AoE can clear out a group of smaller minority enemies with relative ease. For its perks you can increase the effectiveness of its already very powerful heavy attacks such as Aftershock and Ground Slam. So let's take a look at the variety of attacks that the Thunder Hammer has access to. Now we are in the new sparring arena we can look at the attacks that the Thunder Hammer has access to. We are going to start with Aftershock. Aftershock is the standing heavy attack which can be charged for more damage. The main way I use this attack is when dealing with a large group of enemies as it one shots smaller minorous enemies and can deal a good chunk of damage to majorous and extremist enemies too. You can charge it for up to about 3 seconds but in a sparring area it doesn't let you fully charge it. Most of the time I use the minimum charge as I feel that charging is only good in a small number of circumstances. Standing still on high difficulty is just not a very good idea and will probably end up in you losing a large chunk of health. You will definitely see me use Aftershock a lot in the gameplay as it is one of the main strengths of the Thunder Hammer and one of the main reasons that I use it. So to do Aftershock you either want to do a heavy attack from walking, standing still or after and evade. So for example you could just have a small group of enemies coming towards you from there. You could be around the corner. The first swing is going to knock them back. So you knock them back. And the slam will kill pretty much any enemies that you've knocked back. Like that sort of look radio. So you can do it from walking. You can do it from standing still. And can do it after an evade. Next up is Ground Slam. Ground Slam is when you heavy attack after a light attack or after a pommel smack. I use this quite a lot as you will see in the gameplay. It's definitely a satisfying attack as it does a lot more damage than just a regular light attack. I mainly use it for majority or extremist enemies after you start the engagement with a light attack or a pommel smash. So to do ground slam, you want to do the heavy attack after a light attack or after a pommel smash. So for example, you could do a few light attacks and go straight into a heavy. You could just do one, go straight into a heavy. We could do a sprinting pommel smash straight into a heavy. So say there's a sniper over there, and dodge him, and hit him with the pommel smash to step him, and then go straight to the ground slam. So now we can talk about pommel smash. Pommel smash is the attack you do from either sprinting or after a dodge. Whenever possible I like to lead with a pommel smash and then go straight into a ground slam after, as the pommel smash will knock the enemy back, give you a free opportunity to use a ground slam afterwards and not be interrupted. But to do pommel smash, you either want to be sprinting and then go straight into a light attack or after dodging, so you could dodge back. So the combo I like to use mainly start an engagement is say you've got a sniper over here you can dodge the sniper shot, sprint it in Hit with a pommel smash, knock him back, and go straight into a heavy. Or even if there's a gun out here in it, or you've got a sniper, or any larger enemy really, or any just annoying enemy that you want to deal with quickly, you can hit him with a pommel smash, go straight into a heavy. And sometimes with the pommel smash as well, you'll get a gunshot from it if it's a smaller enemy. So you can run into him, you can hit him with a pommel smash, and you can get a gunshot off it. Pommel smash is a pretty powerful attack with the Thunder Hammer. And you'll definitely see me using it a lot in the gameplay. 
is very powerful and knock back enemies and just make dealing with larger majorists and extremist enemies a hell of a lot easier as any sort of interrupt or knockback is pretty powerful when dealing with larger enemies so last but not least we have the light attacks and with the thunder hammer the light attacks are endless which means you can chain them for as long as you want and you can just keep swinging 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 I mainly use the light attacks when I'm dealing with a smaller group of minorist enemies they are okay but in my opinion the thunder hammer is all about the large heavy attacks and that as that's when you can feel the power and the aura that the thunder hammer brings so for example you have a small group of enemies here You've got say like two three smaller tyrannids walking at you and just keep swinging at them knocking them back Be swinging forever like this, but I think he's in the front of Hammer is all about this slams, good old aftershock, armor smash, actually a ground slam. definitely do enjoy the thunder hammer but the main strengths of it are definitely the pommel smash and it's very powerful heavy attacks you can do the light attacks but for me and for my enjoyment i definitely prefer to use the heavy attacks so now we can look at which thunder hammer i tend to use so i like the Ephelian liberation alpha version has a good mix of stats and as well you get the balanced defense style but it makes parrying against extremist majority enemies pretty easy. You can switch to the fencing version if you'd like. But as I've been putting a lot of hours into the game, I've, I've learned the power system. And I'm getting a bit more comfortable with enemy attack combos and when to parry, when to judge. I would definitely say balance is more my style, but if you're struggling a bit and getting owned by the larger enemies and more dangerous enemies, you can definitely switch to the defense install. The only difference really is cleaving potential. And cleaving potential is basically how many enemies you can hit with one light attack. So, for example, this one you can hit four. With the balance one, you can hit six. But if you're struggling and getting owned by bigger enemies and struggling to hit your perfect parries, then I'll definitely recommend fencing. But for me, I stick to the balance one. I don't really recommend the block defense, but if you're not a big fan of the blur, the parrying, you don't really use it a lot, you can definitely test it out. But for me, I like the I like parrying and abusing the gunshots as they're pretty powerful. Give your armor back. And you can get a lot of finishes with them. So, I like, I like the balance though. But at the end of the day, it's all personal preference. It's up to you really, but if you want to use what I use, then go ahead and test out the balance one. Now we can talk about the perks. I prefer the bottom tree as it goes more into aftershock, preparation time. You've got ground slam area of effect by 50%. You can do a double ground slam with this perk. With this one, if you kill 10 enemies in quick succession with light combo, you become not back immune and uninterruptible for 5 seconds with this one you get an extra swing of aftershock so once you charge up the aftershock you get one swing you get another swing and then you do the slam so it just helps to it just helps to clear out more enemies you get a bigger AOE it just gives you more worth when using aftershock with this one you get 10% against Majorus 20% against Minus and then this one is probably the, one of the most powerful perks Normal smash deals 50% more damage. So every time you start in an engagement with pommel smash, every single pommel smash doing 50% more. So you can do pommel smash into ground slam, and then that's doing what? 50% more radius, 50% more damage, and then you can follow up with a second ground slam as well. 
as well as all the, the minor buffs you get in, you get an extra 5%, extra 5%, 10% against Majoris, 20% against Minoris. So, this is definitely the, the way to go if you like my sort of aggressive player style. And going in and smack him with a palm smash and then going straight into a ground slam. Where you can bait the enemies towards you. Hit him with an aftershock and you get less preparation time. They're going to be standing still for less so you can move around more, getting hit less, clear out more enemies. Definitely more my play style, the bottom trees, but as again. You can test up uh, the top tree if you prefer, but my play style definitely dictates the bottom trees better. So it's up to you. But if you want to try this build, feel free. Let me know how it goes. But I'm loving the Thunder Hammer at the minute. Now we're going to talk about which perks I like to use on the assault class for this build. So we're going to be using armor reinforcement, auxiliary arsenal, and knowledge of the enemy. For the first line, you can use either of the three. I tend to stick more with armor reinforcement, as it just gives you a ton of survivability. But basically, what it does is every single gun strike you will do, you will get one chunk of armor. Whereas Normally it would be every single finisher gun strike. That would be a gun strike when the, the enemy is finishable. Or a gun strike on a mini on a Minoris enemy when they've been knocked back. But with this one, every single gun strike you do, you receive one chunk of armor. And I think that's pretty OP, which makes survivability a hell of a lot easier. You're going to be taking a lot less health damage because you're going to have your armor up a lot more often. We could definitely go with the other two if you're feeling like you need a bit more damage. But personally, I love the good old survivability, and it's pretty, it's pretty OP perk. With the second line, you can either get 15% weapon damage. I don't really recommend this perk, as it's... I don't know. The only time I'd recommend this perk is if you're struggling a lot with parrying and getting owned by extremists and Majora's enemies. It's the same kind of concept with fencing. If you're struggling a lot with bigger enemies and more dangerous enemies, you can definitely use this perk. So then you can come back out and hit him a bit harder. I recommend Exolary Arsenal though. As when you're having to sit back deal with terminus enemies. Or help your team out. Shooting some long range enemies. It can definitely make your pistol feel a lot more useful. So for the third line you can use Perseverance. Knowledge of the enemy. Active Attrition. Again you can use either three really. But in my experience, Perseverance doesn't seem to work that well. But while performing charge attacks, you do not lose control upon taking heavy hits and you cannot be knocked back. This perk doesn't seem to be working. I don't know if it's bugged or not, but whenever I've used it in the past, and for example, I've been charging an Aftershock, and then an enemy rushes me, hits me with like an unparable attack, I go to, I carry on charging the Aftershock, go to hit him, and I get knocked back whilst using this perk. So I'm not sure if it's bugged or not, but it doesn't seem to be working, so I don't recommend using it. I would stick with knowledge of the enemy. As the majority and extremist enemies are what you're what you're really gonna be focusing on in this class. So for example, if you got a sniper and he's got three melee majority enemies running after him, you're gonna be trying to help him out and get the enemy stop the enemies from rushing him, using your jump pack, closing the distance, trying to help your team. Deal with, the more, with, deal with those more dangerous melee enemies. You could use active attrition. Personally, my play store is dealing with priority targets, some majorists, some extremist enemies, snipers, melees. It's the bigger, more bigger enemies. That's personally my play store. It's up to you. You could use wherever the free really. So for the team perks, you've got Squad cohesion, strategic strikes, proven efficiency. If you like to melee terminus enemies, then you could use strategic strikes. But when it comes to terminus enemies, I tend to stay back and use my pistol more. So I like to recharge as you get more ground pounds. You get you get to use jump pack more often. I could use proven efficiency if you feel like you need more damage and you're struggling with the bigger enemies. Then. Gun strike's going to be doing 50% more damage. Personally, 
Oh, look, does 10% re recharge on the uh, jump pack? So more jump packs, more maneuverability. You can help your team a lot more by moving around the map. Um, so for the gear packs, I like to use Susan Strike, maneuverability, and diligence. For this line, you could use either three, really. But I feel that Hammer of Ref has a similar problem with Perseverance. It doesn't seem to work. So whenever you use a ground pound, you can't be knocked back for 10 seconds. It doesn't seem to work. I'm not sure if it's bugged or not, but I don't recommend using it. I recommend Precision Strikes. You gain 100% extra damage, which radius is reduced by 50%. As again, it's similar to Knowledge of the Enemy. My priority target when using this class is bigger enemies. So that 100% extra damage means I can land on them with a ground pound, do a big chunk of damage, go straight into a pommel strike, straight into a ground slam, and then most of the time from that combo, they will be finishable. So ground pound, into pommel strike, into pommel smash, into ground slam. Nine times out of ten, that will put a majority enemy into finishable. I don't use the jump pack dashes, so this is a waste. You get 20% recharge, so if you're using squad cohesion, you're giving your whole team 10%, and then you're getting an extra 20%, so you're getting 30% recharge on your jumper. This one's good if, if you're using it to kill more minoris enemies. Because most of the time, if it's minoris enemies, I'm using aftershocks, ground slams, I'm using my hammer more to do with the more minoris enemies. So that's pretty much wasted on me. So I tend to stick with just the flat 20% recharge. And for the last line, you can go with this one. I don't recommend this one. If you're only doing finishers and you're spamming finishers a lot, then it might come in use. A fully prepared ground pound does 20% more damage. The preparation time increases by 25%. I'm not sure with this perk. I'd need to... I'd need to see in-game numbers, really, to see if this perk actually is useful. Because I'm not sure if it's as a fully prepared ground pound. I'm not sure if it actually means when you literally sit in the air and you hold the ground pound until you can't hold it anymore. I'm guessing that's what it means, but I'd need to test it really to see it otherwise. But I tend to just use this perk. I'm perfectly timed dodge using a jump pack dash. You do 20% more damage for 5 seconds. I don't use a jump pack dash, so this is a waste of a perk for me. I tend to stick with diligence. Let's now run to the signature perks. The top one, in my opinion, is pretty irrelevant. As with the assault class, you're only using a pistol. And the reload times are well, about half a second. So unless you're a big reload hater, I wouldn't really recommend using a perk. So for this one, Ascension, basically what it does is in the takeoff area, you do a small amount of damage. So, for example... If you're in the face of a majority enemy, you can just up down them. So you can use your jump pack to go up and then come straight back down on them. So you're basically getting a tiny bit of damage on the takeoff and then the ground pound damage coming back down. Or you could use it in a swarm. So if you're getting swarmed by my minority enemies, you can just up down and it would double hit again. All the enemies around you. So if you've got quite an aggressive playstyle, then this is definitely the perk to go. Big reload hater, recommend ample ammunition, ample ammunition. But commitment, I don't use the jump pack dashes, so it's, it, would, it would be a pointless perk if I used it. So I stick to Ascension. So that is the class covered. So now we can go into the gameplay. And I hope you like the build. I hope you like the gameplay. And any other builds you'd like me to try, or any other challenges, builds, Feel free to drop a comment and a like on the video. I hope you like the gameplay and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Your mission is to use the store Prometheum in the refinery to just First proceed to the Cadian outpost and establish their fleet. You must then infiltrate the refinery and complete demolitions to point. Trigger detonation only when the main swarm has entered the blast zone. Captain Akaram will coordinate our efforts on the rocks. Let's deliver the Akaram.
no card effects no longer sully as this world. Be surveyed from a better vantage. Captain Akaran. Secured. The Emperor provides. Proceed to the Prometheum refinery and complete the demolition preparations. Jump pack refueled. Let us march unhindered. Glory to the Imperium. The lifeblood of the astronauts. Let us make the news.
axis aligned. Margin of error 0.0, 0 nanometers. Presently be the only science to guide your position. Why do I should have this thing calibrate my scope? Xenos was but no horror. Ready, brothers! in the main. Angel at your disposal. I will not yield to the actual doubt. Hold secure. I await you.
What's your signal, Captain? Dig in. We need that bomb triggered for optimal yield. Orbital scan estimates the bulk of the swarm will not be in position for a while yet. Keep your heads and get it done. They're on to us. Time to start picking them off. Thank you. 